OK. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do in this case is I'm going to show you how to graph. Now, but before we even get to anything graphing, Hunter, um, bless you, what we want to make sure that we accomplish is being able to understand and identify all of the essential information. You're going to have to know it for your test, all right? And it very, makes it very, very simple to be able to graph everything, all right? So first thing you need to know, first thing let's go over is determining the amplitude. Remember, the amplitude, well, first of all, actually, let's kind of, if we need to remember all this stuff, let's write in the general form here of A times the cosine of Bx minus C plus D. OK? So here's an example of a cosine function. All right. So the amplitude, remember, ladies and gentlemen, is the absolute value of A. So in this case, our A Kobe is what? Huh? Five. five. So the absolute value of five is? Five. 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 Done. Uh, second middle box on the other side. Other side. There you go. So that's the middle. Um, so therefore, got the amplitude. Does everybody got it? Understand? Think they can figure that one out? Good? Feel good with that? Yeah. OK. So that's the amplitude. The next one is the period. So you're going to want to make sure you write these down because you're going to need to know all these definitions and stuff. So it would be helpful. So the period. Remember the, uh, remember the formula for period is 2 pi divided by b, right? So now what we need to do is determine what is our b. Well, you can see that we don't technically have a number in front of the t. However, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this question. Is t over 12 equal to 1 12th times t? Yes. Yes, it's the exact same thing. More often than not, the problems are going to be written as t divided by 12. All right? So you guys are going to have to understand that we're going to want to rewrite it with it as t times 1 12 to understand that that's our b. So therefore, it's 2 pi over 1 12th. Now, if you guys remember, right, it's 2 pi divided by b. b is the number in front of our t, right? Because we can rewrite that as in front. So now, remember to do this. This goes back into uh, what we did last class period is multiplying by the reciprocals. That cancels out. So therefore, we have 24 pi. Holy moly. <laughs> now. The next thing we need to do is determine the x scale. Okay. Now remember, to determine the x scale, all we need to do is take the period over 4. <laughs> right? So we take our period, which is 24 pi, and divide it by 4, and that equals 6 pi. Okay. Just following the process, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we're simply doing. Now, the next thing is we need to determine our x scale. Sorry, our phase shift. So to determine the phase shift, as I told you guys, take what's inside the function and set it equal to 0. A lot of you are going to get it wrong on the test. I'll just tell you right now, so hopefully you can input it in your brain not to make this mistake. Take the long road, OK? A lot of you are going to make this mistake. I haven't had a class yet that somebody has not made the mistake. And the reason why they probably made the mistake is they're not here in class today, or they didn't pay attention and didn't write it down. When determining the phase shift, take what's inside the parentheses and set it equal to 0. So it's t over 12 minus pi over 4 equals 0. Because what does everybody in this class want to say? Because this is what we did. This is what it was like for quadratics. This is what it was like for exponential and logarithmic. You say, oh, my phase shift is minus pi 4, so that means I shift pi 4 to the right. It's very common. But it's not always that case. So you set it equal to 0. You add pi over 4 to both sides. Therefore, you have t over 12 equals pi over 4. Multiply 12 on both sides t equals 3 pi. So that means my phase shift is 3 pi. Comprende. OK, so my phase shift is actually p 
3 pi. So I'm actually shifting this graph over 3 pi to the right. I'm not shifting it over pi force to the right. Sometimes that's the case, but that's only the case when b is 1. That's the only time that works. OK? All right. So now, um, the last thing, guys, is we could do the vertical translation. But are we adding anything outside the function? No. So the vertical translation is none. All right, so now let's get to the fun part, the graphing. So while I'm spending all my time getting all my points correct, because this is all worth points on your test, some of you are already plugging it into your calculator, which is fine. But you need to be able to know, make sure you know how to find those important points, as well as how to graph this correctly. All right. So let's go into our amplitude, because I think the amplitude is the best place to start. You have your amplitude. Amplitude is the half distance of how high it goes and how low it goes. right? So the half distance is 5. That means the total distance between the height and the minimum is 10. So that means it goes up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and goes down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so we can use the amplitude now to scale our y-axis. Because we know the graph is only going to go up as high as its amplitude. It can only go as up high and as low as 5. Up as high as 5 and as low as 5. All right, so now we need to determine what, how are we going to scale this x-axis, though. So what we'd like to do is look at our x-scale. All right, so if we look at our x-scale, our x-scale is 6 pi. So remember, guys, when we were doing that last problem, that means if here is 6 pi, then the next one has to be, Hunter, what does the next one have to be? Exactly. Uh, Caroline, what does the next one have to be? Well, if this is 6 pi, the, di the distance between each point or scale is 6 pi. 12 pi. Then the next one's 18 pi, 24 pi, 30 pi. 36 pi. All right. Now, when you guys are graphing these, you're going to have to include two full periods. You can do two full periods and one in the positive direction. You can do two full periods in the negative direction. You can do two full periods, one in the positive, one in the negative. Just really depends on how you want to look at it. Um, I will continue. I will just do one in the positive and one in the negative. OK, so that's the x scale. That's where every important part is going to happen. Either your x-intercept, your maximum, and your minimum, and so forth. All of those are going to happen at the x scale, right? So what I like to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is I like to sketch the parent graph. I'm not going to use a, a pen and write it in there. But what I'll do is I know that now, ladies and gentlemen, remember the parent graph of the cosine function starts at the y-intercept. And then the next point is the x-intercept. And then it goes down to the minimum, crosses here and there. And that's one full period, right? It contains one full period is how far did it get for one full period? How far did it go for it to complete one cycle? 24. And what did we say it was going to, how long it was going to take? 24, right? So I graphed that correctly. However, so now we have the amplitude, the period, and the x-scale. I correctly did that for the parent graph. But now, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have? We have a phase shift, right? So that means this whole graph gets shifted over three units. So instead of my, this, my maximum being at 0, it's now going to be at 3 pi, right? Instead of my x-intercept being at 6 pi, it's now going to be at 9 pi, 15 pi, 21 pi. 27 pi, 33 pi. Same thing over here. Um, now it's at negative 3 pi, negative 9 pi, negative 15 pi, negative 21 pi, negative 24 pi. All right, does everybody see what I did now? I took my original parent graph. I, cra I graphed it with the correct amplitude x scale and period, but I just sketched it right very lightly with a pencil, dotted it. So then I take my phase shift. Because the reason why we want to do this is because what if you guys have a reflection? 
you're going to have to take this black graph and reflect it over the x-axis. Or you're going to have to take this black graph and reflect it over the y-axis. Or you have to take the black graph and shift it up 2, down 5, right? Or we have to shift it left and right. So I like to graph it how it is correctly, and then I do the translations, I'll recall them, and reflections next. All right? Um, so now, let's just graph these. So now my maximum point is at 3. So now my graph looks something like this. You're so confused? Yeah. Where did I lose you? After while you were graphing. While well, my graphing. Yeah. Do you understand how I did the black graph? No. Not really. Or is that a parent graph? Yeah, it's just the parent graph. So why did you graph it to what? Because it was maximum red or what Oh, it's supposed to be five. I just oh. I just have a little depth perception issues. It's supposed to be five. And then how did you start graphing the white piece? Huh? Like how did you graph the So all I did, the only difference between the black and the red is the red is shifted three pi from the black. And the reason why I shifted over three pi is because that was my phase shift. Okay? So the only difference between the black graph and the parent graph that I showed you before is instead of going up to 1, it now goes up to 5. Instead of an x scale at pi halves, the x scale is 6 pi, right? So that's the only difference that we have. Um, and obviously, since the x scale is different, the period's going to be different. And then the last difference is now once I graph the black one, I added in a phase shift, which is 3 pi. So then I shifted the black graph over 3, three pi units. And that's where I come up with the red graph. So to continue, graph just keeps on looking like that. And then there's definitely two full periods. You got that, Caroline? Good? OK. Sweet. So now you guys will have an opportunity. Yes.